Hey everyone, it's Christina here. I hope you are having a beautiful, amazing day. Um, it is, sun's just come out. It's been like a, it's interesting Tasmania weather, right? So, you know, you never know if it's going to be sunny or shiny or it's cold or it might snow. We still may have a white Christmas yet. Anything is possible in Tasmania. Uh, it was like flooding here yesterday. Uh, anyway, so what I wanted to come and talk about was all of the things around food. Like, I think it's really interesting because I'm in this group and, you know, I'm in a lot of health minded or health conscious -y type groups. And these conversations come up all the time where people, you know, for example, somebody has posted something about something. It could be anything. And of course, this fly is now going to annoy me. Um, so it could be that they've posted about bedwetting or they've posted about um, that their child has this, that or whatever. And inevitably, as I sit there and I watch them, sometimes I'll give my answer. Um, just depends on how much time I have there. But other times I'll sit and kind of watch what advice people are giving and what they're receiving. And one of the things that I often see is like people jumping in like this poor woman who's asked this question in this group. And I'm not going to mention any of it because it's all private, etc. But she's asked this simple question in her group. And for me, I'm like, oh, that's kind of what it is. Like, it's just this, this, and this. And I'm looking at all the other answers that have been given to her. And it is like, no, it's salicylates, it's amines, it's oxalates, it's histamines, it's this. And you need to cut those out of the diet completely. And, you know, there's all of this information. And it's really confusing. And for somebody who doesn't know, for somebody who doesn't know what that information is, it's really confusing. And it can be really scary, especially when it's your kids. Because, like, you know, as mums, we want the best for our kids. It's, it's what we do like we're always looking to try and create the best solutions for our children and we're always worried that we're going to do it wrong and we're going to get it wrong and we're going to make a mistake and it's going to be like you know it's going to cost them their health and all of that type of stuff and we want to help our kids like you know so it's really important and emotionally charged types of topics for us when it comes to looking after our children and um, as I'm sitting here and I'm watching this conversation take place I'm like oh if only I could explain this to them. If only I could take away all of the information that they've been bombarded with, all of the science that they've been bombarded with, all of the micromanagement of their child's health. Like if I could just take away some of that and actually let them know that it doesn't have to be that hard. It is allowed to be simple. And you know, my simple solution is not always easy. Simple just means that the answers can be simple. The actual implementation can sometimes still be challenging. But you know what? The challenging of f knowing exactly what foods that your child can have versus the ones that they can't have, um, that challenging is far better to deal with than the challenge of is it salicylates? Is it amines? Is it this? Because, for example, all fruit and vegetables contain some level of salicylates all meats are going to contain some level of amines, like all foods are going to contain some level of histamines depending on how old that food is and how long that food's been stored for and all of that type of stuff. And when we focus in on those things, like we just do this honing in, we get into this micro nano management of nutrition, we miss this big picture. We miss that the big picture is that actually these things that you're trying to avoid actually are helpful as well. Like we do need some salicylates in our diet. We do need some oxalates in our diet. We do need histamines in our diet. Histamine helps to support detoxification of the liver. So if you have none in your diet, which is impossible to have, like you, it's impossible to have none in your diet. Like it's just impossible. You would have at least some in your diet. Um, you might have a low histamine diet that you're following, but you'll still have some histamines in there. But if you had none, you wouldn't be able to detox properly because it does a function in our body that helps us to detox. And so we've gotten to this culture and it's what I see around in like the naturopathic sort of fields or the nutrition type of fields, or even the functional medicine types of fields where um, doctors are starting to look at this type of stuff, especially if they're a functional or integrative practitioner. Um, they're trying to integrate like what they know from a allopathic style medicine with some more natural things. So they've learned allopathic medicine and now they're starting to bring in some other things and look at it from you know a nutritional point of view and 
like bring some of those things into that clinic. Um, and so what we see is this, these conversations about the micros and, you know, the really small things like the histamines. And, you know, if you've got a kid with histamine intolerances, histamines is not a small thing. But what I'm saying is that the focus on just the histamine foods isn't actually the answer. Removing all salicylates isn't actually the answer. Removing all amines from your diet isn't actually the answer. Removing all oxalates from the diet isn't actually the answer. It is maybe some of the solution, and I still then am very hesitant to say you should remove all of those things because there are benefits to us in our body. Like, there's benefits for us eating spinach that's going to contain some salicylates that could possibly contain or provide with histamines in it. Like there's benefit for us having those foods. And so instead of, and this is what I found over and over again in my own clinic, I've got a client who comes to me and, um, you know, they're saying we've been on a histamine free diet or a low histamine diet. We've been on a salicylate free diet. We've done amines. Like we just can't figure out what's going on with this kid. And I'm like, yeah, it's because you're focusing on the single, the small parts as opposed to the whole picture because the child is a whole being. It, they're not just those micro bits of their body. They are a whole being and all of those parts actually work together to be able to create who they are and what they're experiencing and how they're experiencing themselves from a physical point of view as well. And when we start to get so micro, we forget that they're actual human beings that have all sorts of different parts connected and we forget that the human body is this amazing organism that actually you know if one part of it is out of balance the rest of it moves and shifts to make up the homeostasis and to keep it in balance we forget those things so we look at the symptom and go that's the problem when actually that symptom is just one of the ways the body is trying to communicate us communicate with us and tell us the actual problem and what to do and so for me you know I have this often when they come and they say uh, I'm not allowed to eat nightshades because I've been told from the AP diet or the uh, autoimmune protocol that I can't have nightshades because it's bad for the thyroid um, or it's bad for autoimmune disease and I'm like that's not actually the whole story that's not actually the complete picture Actually, some people can and they thrive with those in their diet when they have an autoimmune condition. Some people don't. Some people can have some of those. Some people can only have one of those. And some people can have none of those. But most people that I come across when we're working together can actually tolerate some of them and actually some of them is beneficial to them. And so for me, this is where like people come to me with all these things and they go, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, this pr practitioner said this, this practitioner said that. And, I said, and my response to them is, how about we just do like a hair analysis compatibility test and see what's coming up. Like see what your body is actually telling us that it needs to protect itself from and defend itself from and see what it's actually able to tolerate. Because most often what I have is clients who have come to me and they've said, I'm not allowed to have salicylates and I'm not allowed to have um, the nightshade family. Oh, and I'm not allowed to have dairy because I've been told dairy is bad for me too. Uh, and I'm not allowed to have any gluten and not allowed to have any wheat. And we run the test and we go, okay, here's the foods that are triggering like some immune response for you that your body's trying to protect it from that are not compatible for your system. Here are those foods. And quite often, there's a whole heap of the foods that they've been avoiding that actually they could be consuming and they could be enjoying. So it might be capsicum, for example, and they've left it out because it's a part of the nightshade family and it's got salicylates in it. So they've left it out. It could be, you know, pineapple, for example, where they've been told they can't have that because it's high in X, Y, and Z, whatever, but they could actually be consuming it uh, and it not be causing, you know, the problem and the drama that they think that it's going to create. The same with dairy. Like, you know, so often I get clients come to me and they go, oh, I know that dairy is bad for me. I can't have dairy. And when we run their compatibility testing, it tells us milk. Nobody should be having milk anyway. Uh, unless you've got a cow and you're milking that cow yourself, nobody should be consuming like milk that they buy from the store just straight. Doesn't mean you don't buy milk. It means that you don't consume it just like that. You should always ferment it. Um, 
so nobody should be having milk. Milk always comes up on people's analyses. Um, but they could be having butter, cream, yogurt. It might be that they can't have cow's cheese. It might be that they should avoid, um, you know, something else. But hey, maybe goat's milk is fine. Maybe uh, goat's cheese is fine. Maybe sheep's cheese is fine. And maybe sheep's uh, yogurt is fine. So there's often lots of options there that have been ruled out completely because somebody has been to some practitioner or they've read somebody's book who said this thing and this thing and this thing, that it's not good for autoimmune conditions, that it's not this, that it's not that. And actually, they're missing out on some of the things that they really enjoy in their life and actually provide us with lots of nourishment as well. And they're missing out of them, out of on them because somebody created a generalistic plan to cover a whole bunch of people or a whole group of people and didn't create an individual plan for them. And that for me is one of the things that I love to do when I'm working with my clients is actually to get that test or that analysis done because it helps to free up a whole bunch of things because we know, okay, these foods need to be put on the shelf for a while. They are causing some immediator responders and inflammation in your body. So we just need to put those on the shelf. These foods are ones that I know that are a little bit more challenging on the digestive system. So it's not that you're not going to be able to eat these foods. It's we just need to make sure that you're digesting them properly and we're working on that digestive system and we're allowing you to digest food and supporting you in that process of digestion so that you can bring these foods back in. And I, when I'm talking about foods, I'm not talking about like the chips, the packet of crap. Like I'm just talking about real foods like meat, vegetables, fruit, herbs, spices, um, all of those actual type of real foods, not anything that you're buying in a in a packet that's been fortified, crap sized all of that type of stuff that's like labeled food, but really you don't even want to feed it to your dog. Um, I'm not talking about those. Those ones I just tell my clients, just don't ever bring those back in. They're not good for you anyway. Imagine there's dog turd in them. Um, but there are a whole heap of beautiful foods that are often kept out because of some of this overall generalistic information or this overall plan that was created based on one person's or five person's physiology and you know they found it was helpful for them but it was helpful for alleviating the symptoms instead of actually fixing the problem because as humans majority of us and it's not all because if you're from say a um you know an asian style heritage you know you've got less tolerance for dairy than somebody who's come from a european style heritage so there are some differences between us as humans but generalistically majority of people can get at least some form of dairy in and can be enjoying it most people can enjoy you know some type of you know salicylates and some amines and some histamines like most people can enjoy some of these things and they're actually not a problem for them but they've been told to keep out all of them which means that they're missing out on the beautiful nutrients that those foods actually supply and you know making life more challenging than it needs to and they're not taking out some of the foods that actually do need to come out for them so for example for my son lettuce came up in his analysis like i would never pick lettuce as something that i would think yeah that maybe needs to come out um ben came up with apples apples needs to come out for him for a period of time and again it's not forever it's while we do the work to repair the digestive system to allow it to forget that it's needed to protect itself from that that it maybe has created antigens to those foods like let it forget that and then actually those foods can come back in and so for me it's really interesting to sit back and I've, I've just been doing a little bit more of it recently because a friend has invited me to a group and I'm in the group and I'm just answering questions when I you know something pops up in my feed and I feel like doing it and it's interesting to see the advice and the information that's being given I'm like oh this is just making your life so much harder than it actually needs to be and if you're going to go down the road of doing things well you might as well go the full hog and you, you know, if you're going to go to the point where you're removing salicylates and you're removing amines and you're removing, you know, creating a low histamine diet, if you're doing those things for your children and their health, you might as well go the whole way and actually spend the time that you're doing, doing those things in actually repairing what's going on for them. 
actually repairing and reseeding and healing that digestive system, actually supporting the liver and its breakdown of, you know, waste products and metabolism and, you know, helping it do that effectively. Rebuilding your nutrient store so that you've got plenty of building blocks in your system to nourish yourself and look after all the different jobs that your body has to do. You might as well be rebuilding your microbiome and actually replenishing those things so that that time that you're using to take out salicylates, to take out amines, to take out oxalates, to take out all of those things, that time is being used to create overall healing and wellness instead of just avoiding foods. And you know what? Like if you want to do it that way where you're avoiding the foods, you're totally welcome to do it. I know for some people, you know, especially right now, like while we're about to go into Christmas and then into New Year's, avoiding foods is helpful for them. Like, because, you know, there's going to be a lot of other stuff that's going to be available on Christmas Day. It's going to be really hard. There's a lot of emotions that are around the food. And if you turn up and you don't eat the stuff, um, some people can be offended. And, you know, you might not want to broach that right now. And I know actually a lot of my families who start gaps around this time of year, they start directly after Christmas or they start like, you know, the 2nd or the 3rd of January, because by that time they've gotten through all of the family stuff and they've given themselves a good year to get back to like before that comes around again and the pressure is there again. Um, and so it's, it's interesting, you know, seeing those dynamics for people and watching what's taking place. Um, but the real point I want to get to is stop thinking about the really small things. Like stop thinking about it, you know, getting down to histamines and amines and oxalates and all of that type of stuff and actually expand your thinking a little bit more and, and recognize that those things actually have a role to play in our body. And maybe it's not every single food that has those things in it. And this is the beautiful thing that I love about the hair compatibility stuff that I do is that often I can see patterns that are actually happening in people's, um, you know, testing. So for example, they might come up with um, oregano oil as problematic for them. And so for me, as soon as I start to see oregano oil coming up as problematic, I'm like, hmm, that's telling me that there's a likely to be parasites that are around and oregano oil is really good at killing parasites. But the body is feeding back to us that it is trying to keep those parasites alive. It's trying to protect them from the things that are going to kill it. Why would it do that? Well, it does that because the parasites are serving a purpose. The parasites are actually helping your body deal with heavy metal toxicity. And maybe your liver and your kidneys are overworked at the moment and they're not removing that or they don't have the available resources or your gut is out of balance or your gut is actually dysfunctional with dysbiosis or IBS at the moment. And so it can't do that process of getting rid of those heavy metals or other forms of toxicity that are in your system effectively. So it creates space for the parasites to come in and actually help keep it safe. Its intention is never to hold on to those things. Its intention is always to come back and like get around to fixing the job. But often we are running it so hard under the pump that it doesn't always have the ability or the resources to come back and fix that problem until we bring conscious awareness to it. That it's not the parasites that's the problem. It's why are the parasites there and can we support fixing the gut? Can we support liver detoxification? Can we support kidney detoxification? Because heavy metals prefer to come through the kidney pathway. And then can we support that so that we're allowing the body to do what it knows how to do by getting out of its way, by removing any foods that are problematic and slowing it down and adding to that river of toxicity. So when I'm seeing, seeing oregano oil come up, that's one of the things that I know. Same with garlic. When I often see garlic coming up, that's also telling me that there's some stuff going on in the microbiome and you know it needs to be like that for a period of time. Instead of trying to kill off things, we need to think about let's remove why that thing is there in the first place. The same with broccoli. Broccoli often comes up for people who have heavy metal toxicity. There's often this 
broccoli and lots of dairy tend to come up hand in hand when there's some heavy metal toxicity. There's a couple of other things, like if a lot of chocolate comes up on the list, then it's telling me that their magnesium levels are low and we need to support magnesium more. So there's all sorts of beautiful information that, that I get when I'm reading one of these compatibility analyses. And that for me has always been far more effective and I see far better results from people when we've done that type of analysis to figure out what foods are compatible for you, what foods are supporting your system right now and what ones aren't. And let's take out those ones. And then once we've taken out those ones, now let's do the gut work of restoring and repairing and reseeding and rebuilding the digestive system. Let's do the work of supporting that liver and detoxification. Let's do the work of supporting the kidneys and helping them actually you know, move out what needs to come out and filter out what needs to come out when it comes to, you know, the urinary pathway. Let's do that work so that we can get to this place of actually restoring general overall health and we can bring these nourishing foods back into your diet because, you know, most of them can eventually come back in as long as they're a real food and as long as they're prepared the way that they should be then mostly they can come back into the diet. Um, and so for me, I'm, you know, again, sitting in this, in this Facebook forum, reading the thing going, Oh, love, I just so want to help you. But there's only so much I can say. There's only so much I can do without offending people and then getting kicked out of the room. Um, <laughs> but it's a thing that I see all the time, this nano micro management of the body when it, it is a big it's a big universal body and it's been created with a magnificent design and there's wisdom in it there is this ancient wisdom within the body and it knows how to look after itself it knows what to do but we need to support it in doing that we need to provide it with the resources to do that and sometimes we need to do a little bit of testing to figure out what those things are to be able to help that take place and you know if you've worked with me at all before you know i don't do a lot of testing most of the testing on the market I think is baloney, so I don't do it. If I'm offering a test, it's because it's one that I think is actually useful. Um, and I usually, I would much rather you put your money into real food and helping to support your gut and help your microbiome and your biology to help you with those things than running things like stool tests that aren't really giving us a really clear picture of what's going on inside the digestive system. It's giving us a little bit of information but actually not not as much as people would would have you believe so that's kind of what i want to pass on today i want to pass on that we need to get our head out of the histamines and the amines and the salicylates and all of that type of stuff that we've been handed down we need to get our head out of those and actually start looking at it from a more macro point of view and realizing that while our bodies are complex they are also designed in such a beautiful, simplistic way as well. We are both complex and simple at the same time. And if we ha are willing to listen and willing to hear and willing to adjust accordingly, our body will communicate with us what we actually need. That's it for me today. If you want to talk with me more about this, feel free to jump into my uh, messenger bot, whatever thing, messenger jump in there and come and talk to me. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions if you want to pursue some of that pathway or ask any more things that maybe I didn't mention today and that you've got questions on. Um, do that. I would love to answer them. All right. Have an amazing day, everyone. Catch you later. See ya.